just before we jump into that, actually, I do have a definition of entrepreneurship. Uh, I know everybody's com confused with entrepreneurship. My, my name is Frank. Before I start talking, I'm going to do a test with you, some test. If you guys understand my English, well, I'm still like doing a mix of French and English. Can you guys clap in your hands once? <laughs> uh, not bad. So, yeah, nobody understands entrepreneurship because I guess it's because it's a French word. Uh, so nobody <laughs> understands us. So one of the definitions actually that's used, on, I just took that as a note, is the process by which by which individuals pursue opportunities without regards to the resource they currently control. Think about that, and if not, then I send you the text, but whatever. So who here is an entrepreneur? Can you guys raise your hand if you are or if you want to be an entrepreneur? All right, who here wants to be a successful entrepreneur? Yeah, makes sense. That's, I'm talking about you guys here. Um, and we'll go there, like, what is success? What's an entrepreneur? For the, for the ones who didn't raise your hand, it's not too late. You'll be able to, uh, to do that later. We're going to make uh, a couple of these. Um, so how do you do that? You want to be a successful entrepreneur? Uh, where do you start? Where well, usually you start at school, um, at the university, uh, and you've got a couple of courses, a couple of books uh, that theorize how you can be successful. The science of getting rich. I found this one. That's a 19, it was written in 1910, and actually I found it in the Harvard Library. That's what they were teaching. That's the way they were teaching entrepreneurship in the 1920. Uh, and there's tons of new versions of that. Um, it's easy to find them. They basically say, that's how you should do it. Um, what I would like to say is it's not that easy. Actually, most of the time, if people explain you how you can be a successful entrepreneur, I think they're full of terrible things. Uh, so the people here who said you want to be an entrepreneur, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need your help. Can you guys just whistle? Good. This is not really a successful entrepreneur. That stand from between the zero and the one, actually I should even put like one million dollars. Um, if I take the number of, start of startups of young company, of company you have in the United States, it's roughly 26 million, 24 million. 96% um, of them are making less than a million dollars. And 74% of them are run by one person. Uh, so I mean, if you're already one person business, you're already, it's already good, but if you're two people, oh my God, you're already in the top 80% of, of a business in the whole United States. This is the US. Um, and on top of that, you have these crazy things, these people who really have like that you see because they rise um, out of everywhere. Can you guys whistle again? Average entrepreneur. Try again. Bah! That's what a successful entrepreneur looks like. And that drives your attention, right? You're like, oh, I don't care about this whistle. I'm just going to watch that very, very successful startup. And everybody does that to a point that it drives everything. It drives research. It drives. Um, actually, most of the science we have, economists, and it drives university program that's going to teach you how to work for a successful entrepreneur. So it's great. You're going to learn about management. You're going to learn about all these things that are very rational. Um, and that's, that's kind of where our knowledge is coming from, from the right side to the left side. So middle of the graph, uh, microeconomics. Right side of the graph is going to be macroeconomics, though, just for information, all the small business in the United States contribute for more than 50% of the GDP. And actually, they contribute for more than 99% of the jobs, net jobs created. But still, we're still looking there. And I'm not even talking about what happened before you do business. Uh, it's the twilight zone. Nobody really understands it. It's these crazy, wandering people who just, actually, uh, I can't remember, but tried to go to a to startup weekend for an interview and end up doing all these amazing things. Like, there's no logic behind that when you look at the data. Um, so let's look at it like a game, right? Just to give you uh, an idea about another game, if I take the game of chess, and everybody knows that, it's eight by eight boards with 20 moves. Um, the number of combinations you can do with this kind of game is more than 10 to the power of 123, which is more than the number of atoms in the universe. But that's an easy game. Entrepreneurship, it's 6 billion players, and all of them willing to succeed. And the rules are not really well known, and the move neither. So it's kind of crazy. I would like to say, can the successful entrepreneur, can you guys whistle again? You guys are crazy. It's like volunteering for the Hunger Games. You have no chance. You're never going to make it. I don't know why you try to do these things. Um, so how do you deal with that? How, how, do, you, how do you go, um, you know, how do you, be a, how do you become a good player at that game? Um, so there's a couple of things here. I, I've been talking to a lot of people there. So let, let me um, give you an example. Let's say you guys have, have your business and you want to create this idea and you have the opportunity, the opportunity to do it. You have the right team, you have all the things. But you're a student at UW. Would you stay a student at UW and give up your business? Or would you quit? studying and launch your business. That's one of the many dilemma uh, that entrepreneurs have to deal with. And I don't have an, uni an universal answer. It's tough to be here. 
not going to be, hey guys, you know, do something crazy because you might actually do that and that might actually hurt you. But this is how it works. You have all this daily crazy dilemma to deal with. And path A or path B or path B or C or whatever, I'm confused, is, is not easy to, to take. Um, and if you actually look at it through the angle of uh, game theory, um, the, guy, the guy right here, Reinhardt uh, Selton, was the Nobel Prize of Economy at the same time as Nash. I don't know if you guys know Nash Equilibrium. It's a great movie called uh, uh, Brilliant Mind. Um, what he says is like, basically, we're rational people. You guys, successful entrepreneurs, I can tell you already, are actually pretty much rational. But because you have a limited amount of time, uh, because you have limited capacity with your brain, because you don't know the data you have, remember the, the first talk about information versus knowledge? Um, you make something that you believe is rational, but 10 years later, maybe you'll realize, oh God, I should have quit university. I should have, uh, I should have not have done this crazy business, even if it makes sense at that time. So this is a tough world, but there's some good news. I'm gonna start to add some hope in this terrible, uh, terrible world of entrepreneurship. The first one is, you're not alone. Again, like you make a lot of noise, you're looking at these people, and you can be Bill Gates, or you can be Steve Jobs, and all this. none of them made it being alone. Uh, that's, that's an obvious statement. If I look at here, and if I look at uh, Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb, he never invented the, lab, the light bulb, and he wasn't alone either. He had a team of engineers. So keep that in mind. This, these are things we know. The other thing is density. We live in a world with more than 6 billion people, and it keeps going crazy. And when you look at the number of people on Earth, well, it, like compared to 100 years ago or whenever you were born, it's already keep exponentially growing. And that's great. This is a huge opportunity to maximize serendipity. Uh, who here is an engineer or does like math stuff, physics? Like, can you guys raise your hand? Who's a business guy? Are you guys talking to each other? <laughs> you should. You, you want to maximize these, these things. Like, I, I've got people here who do theater. I've got people here who do business. I've got someone here who wants to make electric by going through the, the university. I've got Amazing people who want to have impact in, uh, in Myanmar. I mean, you have all these things. And actually, I didn't make the math, but if we're like 100 people, and if we want to make a team of three people, there's more than 10 million combination right here of different teams that you could build just here in that room. So maybe five, I don't know, I can do the math. So how do you deal with that? How do you actually teach entrepreneurship? Because obviously, it doesn't work by, by books right now, because we don't have enough knowledge. We don't have enough understanding of how it works. So that's the approach we took at Startup Weekend. We get you guys in a room. We let everybody come, that's the format. We let anyone who wants to pitch an idea, people like the idea, they join you in a team, and you execute on it. What it is, it's an entrepreneurial simulation. It's the real world. Um, you have your team, you try to execute on it, and, uh, and at the end of the weekend, if everything is bad, you just go back home. So it's kind of a, a way to try entrepreneurship, to get a taste of it, but still being protected by, um, by the format. And so we're doing that, I started that with uh, my co-founders, um, to cover it in 2009, switch it to a nonprofit, um, and we started with 20 events a year. Um, in 2010, we had more than 80 events. Last year, we had 260 events, and this year we're going to have more than 500 events in 360 cities, or almost 300, and in more than 90 countries. So it works. And as an entrepreneur, I want to try this thing. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Obviously, it's, it's scaling, and we have all this difficulty. But how do we address that? How do I make people experiencing entrepreneurship? How can we rationalize a little bit this crazy world? And, and there's good news is we're getting better and better at it. Uh, who here knows what's an incubator? Can you guys raise your hand? Roughly, you have, these, you have this structure that has been evolving in the past. If, if I take that graph, it's exactly the same graph you had at the beginning. It's the entrepreneurial story. That's a model we use at Startup Weekend, and like every model, they're wrong. Uh, but we try to make this one useful. So here down there, it's one of you guys, and you're getting inspired, and there's some research around that, and basically, the more you go in the bottom of a graph, the less we know about what happened. Maybe you're gonna be inspired because of a talk at TED, or maybe you're gonna get inspired because of your family or combination of everything, of crazy events that happen in your life that makes you realize that life is important and that you need to do everything. There's many reasons for being inspired, but once you're inspired, you need, you need to get knowledge. You need to, uh, to get this information, understand it, and put it in a way that you can actually build something. And once you know you want to be an entrepreneur and you have this knowledge, you need to jump out of a cliff and get into action, and etc. And then we go into the startup world where the goal is to stabilize this team of people working on something to, have, to sustain a business model and to scale it, which is a complicated, complicated way to say you want to make money uh, so you can survive and keep doing these things. And by the way, about, about entrepreneurship, uh, there was a good study about, about it on Harvard that says by nature, every 
every company, every business you do is social because even if the impact is not direct, you still have this indirect impact. So it's like all these things we see and we observe and we see that now like for action, that's what we try to address at Startup Weekend. How can we get more people to jump out of a cliff in a way that it's less dangerous, but in a way that also doesn't um, uh, conflict with being successful. So right now what we observe is more than 12% of the startup that goes through Startup Weekend are still alive a year after. And uh, last year, our top 10 startups raised more than $40 million. Though the, the, number, the number of money that you raise doesn't, doesn't mean success neither. Uh, when I'm talking about success, it could be, it could be anything. It just means you're gonna achieve something. So that's what we try to address. And you have also incubators. You have also structure at school that try to evolve. So the world is evolving. And I think this is a very exciting time for you guys, the next generation. Because right now, I don't know if you guys saw the news yesterday, for example, but I think um, one company is trying to find a way to mine asteroids. Uh, you have people here who works on um, an amazing project. You have 3D printing. You have all, all, all this technology that makes things cheaper and cheaper, so anyone can, can try these things. It's like there's less risk. You can actually just start to do your business. And worst case scenario, uh, there's a way to escape out of that without, too much, uh, uh, to, without suffering too much from it. So that's our motto, no talk, all action. I'm sorry I've been talking too much uh, right here, but I'd be, um, I've been standing around like, for uh, the next like, couple of hours. I would like to thank everybody from TEDx for organizing that. And uh, it's beautiful outside. You guys are all the next generation. You're all very brilliant. Please talk to each other. Please consider entrepreneurship as an option. Because if you really think about it, first of all, 50% of the people hate their jobs. That's the last statistics in the US. And secondly, a job might be the safe option right now, but in 40 years when you get laid off and you don't know what to do, it's going to be more dangerous. So just try to rationalize everything in this very irrational world. Thank you.